Okay, welcome to uh, John Furrier, SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, a daily program called The Extraction Point, where we are at the center of all the data flowing around the web. And, uh, you know, from start to finish, from the morning till the afternoon, a lot of stuff happening. We will be there extracting all the signal from the noise here at 4 o'clock every day. That's going to be our format. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. I'm really excited by um, really the idea of bringing a lot of people in to SiliconAngle.tv and focusing on knowledge, extracting that knowledge out from the data out there and from the opinions. So it's going to be opinions, it's going to be facts, it's going to be a, a discussion around what's happening. Last Friday, for example, we had a great conversation with uh, Doug Garland and uh, Ramin Darbaha from uh, uh, Finland, talking about Nokia and Microsoft. And, and it was a very good conversation, and it hit us that that's a, a format we want to expand on. So we're going to try to do it every day at 4 o'clock. We're going to talk about the key things that need to be extracted out of the marketplace. A lot of bloggers out there, a lot of noise in the marketplace talking about news, what does it mean, and the data is going to be at the center of it, and we're going to extract that data and bring in our friends and people that we follow in Silicon Valley and beyond to get their opinions, to talk about it, and to extract out the detail so that you know what it means. Uh, for example, today there's been some big news about the uh, HP buying a company called Vertica, uh, an area close to our space in the cloud software market, and uh, you know, we have a lot of information on that because uh, you know that's obviously impacts the big data market, and obviously we're here at Cloudera, the home of big data, where our office is in Cloudera Labs, where SiliconANGLE Labs is located, and so HP bought a company today, pretty big deal, uh, called Vertica, which is backed by Kleiner Perkins, Bessemer, NEA, and Highland Capital. The CEO is Chris Lynch, and it's a company that's about six years old, based in Billerica, Massachusetts. And uh, it's interesting that HP is now going after the big data market. Um, we've seen you know, Hadoop rise up and companies like Cloudera, the hottest startup in Silicon Valley, established their leadership in big data. And now the big guys are coming in. We see EMC by Greenplum, a uh, very fast-growing startup, now part of EMC. IBM is doing a lot of work in big data. And now HP buying Vertica is a huge deal because HP had uh, a huge investment with PDW, which is Parallel Data Warehouse. And that has now been uh, eliminated with this acquisition. So it shows that HP is changing their strategy to be a big data player. And we're going to bring in some folks tomorrow to talk about that in detail. So tomorrow we'll find some, some folks here in the big data market that have experience in that. We'll, we'll drill down on it. But that's what, what this show's about. We want to get to the heart of the issue, and really the extraction point is this show at 4 o'clock every day, and we're going, to, we're going to talk about all the things that need to be extracted out and discussed. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's Silicon Angle, at Silicon Angle, or at Furrier is my handle, and uh, looking for uh, some folks who want to just send some comments in, we'll send them in. Now, this week we have some interesting guests. We have uh, tomorrow we're going to have Omar Trojman from Cloudera, who used to work at uh, Vertica, is going to comment on bi the big data seen from HP and kind of what that means to the marketplace. On Wednesday, we're going to have Andy Kessler, author, famous head hedge fund manager, Silicon Valley guru. He writes for the Wall Street Journal and New York Times. He's flying in from LA from his trip down there and, and recently wrote another book called Eat People. And we're going to talk to him about entrepreneurship and key lessons. And then on Thursday, we're going to have Rich Grenta come in. He's the CEO of Bleco, a very well-funded, uh, big-hyped startup that's in the search engine space. And we're going to drill down on them and talk about some of their value. Uh, I was pretty hard on Bleco when they launched. didn't really like the product at first, but we're going to drill down and get an update from, from Rich and give him a chance to talk about some of their innovations. Um, I've been a little bit bullish lately on Bleco, mainly because they didn't feed into the hype, and I think the marketplace gave them a lot of the hype. And uh, I'm going to give them the, the, a pass on that on my, on my critical comments because what they're doing is very interesting. They're attacking these content farms, and they're looking at spam in a new way. So we're going to hear from Rich Screnta on that on Thursday. And then Friday, we might take a, a, a day off on Friday or have a guest host because I'm going away on vacation. Our kids have a five-day weekend, so that's going to be uh, probably a no-go on Friday. We'll see. We'll let you know uh, as the week comes on. So, Ricky, who do we have? Do we have uh, Bala come in the house yet? We have a guest coming in here. We have a guest that's coming in. His name's Vala. He's a new new hire here at Cloudera. He's in the management space. We're going to talk in detail about uh, management. Looks like looks like they're coming out of meetings right now. We'll see if we can get him in. Now he's. Let's 
let's take a look at what's going on, on the web today. So, so the big news today, uh, in my opinion, is uh, a couple things. Um, one, in the spirit of extraction, extracting out the signal is the reality of the bubble that we're living in. Uh, Zynga is is looking at taking in about you know quarter million to three hundred million dollars in new financing um, at a seven billion dollar valuation. I heard. Uh, from my sources that the number is close to nine billion dollars. Um, I also have some uh, some friends who were angel investors in Zynga and first round investors so I could not be thrilled for my friend Paul Martino and Rich Levendoff who have a massive exit in that uh, in that company and I hope they sold some shares and paid back their funds ten times over so those guys are sitting sitting pretty and for Mark Pincus who is a CEO who's about my age really made it big and put his mark on the tech industry. He's been an entrepreneur for years, going back to his career. He's had some startups, he's had some successes, but nothing to this to this level. So I like I like Zynga, I like the valuation, I like the cash flow, and uh, I think I think they deserve to have that kind of valuation. But to me, that's that's the big story is these valuations. And I wrote a blog post on, on Friday talking about the bubble. And I had some interesting comments. Uh, Matt Eastwood, who's an IDC analyst, said, it's a market cap bubble, not an IT bubble. Well, I think a bubble's a bubble, and I think the market cap bubble is is one that has some collateral damage. I think, you know, in my post, I agreed with uh, Brad O'Neill, who runs uh, Tech Validate, that there is a bubble and it's going to burst. I also agreed with this guy Roger, who's a VC, uh, angel investor, that um, some of the mega brands do deserve the valuation. I would agree that Twitter deserves a high valuation. I mean, it's just so revolutionary that product; it's so disruptive. Zynga. Facebook, and these are new mega franchises, and I think they're going to command the kind of valuations that will allow them to earn a lot of future cash flow. So those brands I agree with. The, the things I don't agree with is the, the, uh, the valuation of Quora and these other companies that are kind of second tier uh, mega brands, not even close to even being mega brands. They're hyped up management teams with an unproven product. I think these are the kinds of companies that are going to be very frothy and bubblish that will ultimately burst. Um, I don't know if it's been out there, but I do know the valuation of Quora. I'm going to try to see if it, the valuation the valuation of Quora is out there. And I'm uh, not sure if I want to break it on this program, but um, if Arrington is breaking it yet, because normally Arrington, Mike Arrington breaks all of the scoops. Um, if Arrington, you're watching this, you know, if you the valuation, then uh, if you know the valuation of Quora or you don't, then you're bummed because I know the valuation of Quora and uh, what they're look asking for. So it's, it's outrageous, the valuation that Quora is demanding right now for some young guys who are good guys building good products. Uh, I, just, I just don't buy that that's going to be the, the kind of valuation. I think that's where the damage is going to be, and the, the collateral damage will be f uh, in, this failed, in, in the case of failed startups. So to me, that's a major problem is those failed startups. Um, the, other, the other hot thing that I'm finding is big data. The, uh, the big data hype is key. And one of the things that's really exciting about SiliconANGLE, SiliconANGLE.TV, and the Cube, and the extraction point, this show, is that we're sitting at ground zero for big data. The SiliconANGLE office is, uh, is at the space of Cloudera, uh, which is the company that's commercializing Hadoop. Cloudera is the hottest startup in Silicon Valley. And uh, not a lot of people know about it. I mean, people are writing about all these Facebook companies like Quora or whatever, but you know, they're not writing about Cloudera. In fact, in a post by Sarah Lacey of AOL TechCrunch, she wrote about a post about the Facebook mafia. She can barely mention Hadoop because I don't think she really understands Hadoop. And I think that you know Hadoop and Cloudera are very relevant. And an ex-Facebook alumni is the founder of Cloudera, um, as well as ex-Yahoo uh, ex with Amr Awadala. Um, but Cloudera is open source. It's about open source. It's about the smartest minds in the industry working on a really game-changing technology. And that's really powerful. And we're, we have a front row seat of that here at SiliconANGLE. So that's super exciting. Our studio is going to be here capturing it live. We're excited to have Ricky and Michael help out with the studio. We're going to try to get that up and running. The other, the other notable things is uh, a conversation we had, um, I had privately with a bunch of uh, investors and uh, VCs and, and executives privately, but then publicly we talked about Netflix. People were so down on Netflix. I think there was a Twitter debate that went on. I stood firm on the long position on Netflix. People were arguing the stock price, but Netflix is definitely a long on my mind. You know, they can be a game changer. I think Hulu might get caught in the net a little bit on this whole licensing thing, but I think Netflix has the answer. And I'm really bullish that they're going to be a major player uh, in the mobile space for content. 
the in Intel investment uh, today was an interesting story that they invested 26 million in a bunch of cloud, uh, mobile cloud companies. Um, you know, I think Intel is really groping at this point for relevance, and I think, you know, um, the Mego thing is a real uh, shining example of how um, Intel really is just seems to be missing a lot. I mean, they they're very smart. I just think Intel might be moving a little bit too slow for the marketplace, and I think the Migo Nokia thing, and then this recent patch of investments doesn't really show me anything from Intel. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to evaluate that a little further. But my opinion is Intel just seems to be slowly becoming closer to irrelevant, and more and more in these conversations around being the Wintel mon monopoly that they once had. And HP's big announcement this past week was, you know, a sign that they're moving from Intel. So Intel really is losing out in my mind. I think we're going to watch Intel closely. I'm sure that if they cut expenses, the, their earnings would look good, but ultimately from a product standpoint, I'm just not seeing it. So we're, we're going to keep an eye on Intel. Ricky, how are we doing on uh, our guest, Bala? Is he coming in here yet? Yeah, he is stuck in a meeting. He's stuck in a meeting. Some other top stories uh, today. It's Valentine's Day. It's my daughter Jacqueline's 14th birthday. Jacqueline, if you're watching, it's a shout out for you. Um, and uh, happy birthday. She's 14 on the 14th. And I'm uh, going to go take care of the, the ladies in my life today, Jacqueline and my wife, Linda. So we're going to have a good time with that. And uh, we're going to end the show early today. Ricky, what do you think? Let's see if we got any questions from the, uh, the group here. We're here in, in SiliconAngle.tv's headquarters. Um, we're going to re reset and bring back uh, Ricky and our guest. We're going to find out where he's at, but we're at the SiliconAngle.tv studios where I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle. And we're going to start a daily show called The Extraction Point. And it's going to be a, a fun show as we highly opinionated. For the folks that don't know me, um, I'm very opinionated, not afraid to share my opinion out there. I'm old enough where I can not have to worry about it, and uh, it's got a lot of experience to share there, so I'm looking forward to that. But more importantly, we're going to have some great guests, and we're going to have uh, a lot of fun talking about the top news and really extracting out the signal from the noise. So we'll be right back. We're going to take a real quick break, and we'll come right back with uh, more Extraction Point. Prepare for the extraction point. We've been briefed on all the important stories and events in the world of emerging information. Now, it's time to extract the data and turn it into action. Live from the SiliconANGLE studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, this is Extraction Point with John Furrier.